Hello everyone, back to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week's 10 days for today's second video. It takes us around 28th of uh, July, so we're heading towards the final part, uh, final days of July with these um, week to 10 day updates now. Uh, have a look at the Bayesian Climate Centre as well for the next 40 days. That takes into the second half uh, of August. So, with a slightly cooler, fresher, a uh, little bit more cloudier type uh, weather pattern at the moment, only a few showers uh, around. However, uh, over the next few days, we cover this in the five-day forecast, which has been released early on today. Um, it does look as though some parts of the country are going to become very warm again. A reasonable amount of dry weather. There might be some thunderstorms in the southeast corner on Friday. They're looking very hit and miss, so a lot of uncertainty about that. Um, so generally just warming up in the south and then a little bit more unsettled at times in the northwest. But have a look at the five-day forecast and uh, see what you think. This video is extending out beyond the five-day forecast period. Going to start off, though, giving a shout-out to our latest patrons. So we're now up to 22 patrons uh, for Gazo. So I'm going to say uh, a big thank you to our latest patron, Stephen Wright, uh, has become the 22nd patron uh, for Gazo. So a big, big thank you to Stephen for becoming our latest uh, patron for uh, Gazo. If you would like to become a patron for Gazo, and give us an ongoing monthly donation. Um, and it be anything as little as $1 a month. What you have to do is uh, sign up for a page account and then um just pledge whatever uh, monthly donation that you would like to um, give us and by doing that you become a patron uh, for Gaz Ovis. We've got 22 patrons so far so a big thank you to all of the patrons uh, for Gaz Ovis. Alternatively you can give us a one-off donation through PayPal and this is Gaz Ovis PayPal.me page. So if you'd rather just give a one-off donation, you've got a PayPal account then you very simply just come to our PayPal.me ca uh, page and um, just donate to us whatever you would like uh, for that and it's all able to pay uh, for the website. It's helping us to pay to keep content completely free as you uh, want it and need it. So a big thank you to everybody for doing that. We are primarily ads funded. We, we, we will be remaining, so there's not going to be any paywalls or anything like that. We just ask if you can afford to make a donation or become a patron, uh, Ben. Um, Please do that for uh, Gaz Ovis. Big thank you to everyone for uh, becoming patrons and donors for Gaz Ovis. You'll get a shout out in videos uh, if you want one. If you want to remain anonymous, that's fine. Just drop us a note with your donation to tell us that you'd rather um, not have your name mentioned in the videos. We'll just thank you anonymously in that case. But otherwise, you will get a mention like Stephen has done today uh, to say thank you very much for either becoming a patron or a donor for Gaz Ovis. And a big thank you to everyone for doing that. Right, so I'm going to start off by having a look at the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles for uh, the next couple of weeks. Uh, someone's asked me to have a look at Nuki today. I think we're off on holiday to Nuki at the weekend, and they've asked if I can have a look at the uh, ensemble data uh, for Nuki. So this is it. This is how the uh, upper air temperature chart is looking uh, for Nuki. Uh, so we can see that the red line here is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Nuki. We're starting off close to average at the moment. So it's a little bit cooler. has been over the past day or two. But you can see that through the end of the week and into the weekend, the trend is upwards. So actually, by the time you get through to sort of Monday, which is kind of like the end of the five-day forecast period, it's actually becoming quite hot again in terms of those uh, upper air temperatures. I think we'll be seeing temperatures going back up to 30 degrees uh, again in the south by, uh, by the start of next week. A couple of slightly cooler days then uh, from, the from the middle, uh, sort of early to middle part of next week. But then in the extended range, we're lifting the temperatures up once more. And uh, it looks like it could turn really quite hot actually as we go through this final week of um, July. So summer certainly hasn't done with us uh, yet. And in fact, we may still have the hottest phase of this summer to go. Statistically, late July to early August, that's kind of like um, statistically the hottest period of the year. So it could well be that the temperatures have uh, got even further to go before this summer uh, is done. It certainly looks like it's going to be quite a hot end to July, possibly even into the start of August as well. Rainfall wise for Nuki, well, it uh, looks completely dry over the uh, next week, really, as we go into the final days of July. I've got a little bit of precipitation 
appearing, but again, that's in the extended range, it's unreliable. Uh, so, I mean, it's just the ongoing idea, but we've been seeing a lot with these ensemble charts over the past few weeks. The extended range, yes, there are some precipitation spikes, um, even then, they're not all that convincing, and certainly for the next week of a reliable period, it looks really quite dry indeed down in the southwestern part of the country. So dry and warm to hot basically sums it up. And that's how the temperature anomaly is looking for the week ahead. This is from the 18th to the 26th of July. And it's coming out warmer than ever. This is such a prolonged warm spell that we've been in uh, now. Notice how hot it is again across northern uh, parts of Scandinavia. So, I mean, right there up in the Arctic Circle, we're seeing temperature anomalies of uh, up to 10 degrees above average. So, I've seen some reports that in the Arctic Circle near uh, near northern Scandinavia, you'll be seeing temperatures into the 80s Fahrenheit. But do bear in mind that around Greenland uh, and Iceland, it's actually been quite a cold summer, quite a cool summer uh, for those areas. But uh, certainly northern Scandinavia has been uh, very hot uh, this summer. And it continues for the next week. The UK and Ireland coming out more than average. In fact, all parts of Europe really coming out more than average. Hottest anomalies to average across Scandinavia. Precipitation anomalies, they're looking drier than average, so it's the same old, same old, really rinse, repeat for England and Wales and Ireland. Anyway, coming out significantly drier than average for the uh, 18th through 26th of July. Northern Scotland is closer to average, but maybe, you know, maybe even a little bit wetter than average from the very far north of Scotland, but generally it's a dry scene again uh, for the weekend. France looks rather wet, that's probably down to thunderstorms, it looks so like most of those will be kept at bay across uh, France. Scandinavia also coming out uh, very dry indeed for the weekend. The south and southeast of Europe uh, remains a little bit wetter. Uh, around the Balkans in particular and down to Greece. Uh, Spain and Portugal, though, coming out drier than average. Just what's going on in America. I haven't looked at uh, these charts for America for a while. So this is a temperature anomaly for the weekend in the United States from the 18th to the 26th of July. Uh, western parts of America, very significantly hotter than average. Real heat going on over in the western parts of the states. But in the east, actually, it's quite a cool scene. So kind of like in the bread basket and over to the eastern states, rather cool there uh, in the week here, cooler than average anyway, from the 18th to the 26th of July. Precipitation wise, it looks like that. So, a bit of a mix from state to state, very dry, uh, very dry in the far northwestern part of the states. And usually the southwestern states look quite wet, uh, despite the fact it's very hot. There may be some thunderstorms going on there. Uh, and then we go over to the east of the states. It looks a little bit wetter than average there. So rather cool and unsettled and a little bit on the wet side, uh, really, for eastern parts of America. In complete contrast to what's happening in the west of Europe, of course. So this is how the GFS is looking for Saturday. We find that we've got high pressure building back in from off the Atlantic. So that's Sunday with high pressure uh, across England and Wales. Anyway, there will be weather front bringing some cloud and rain to the north of Scotland. The early part of next week has that high pressure again across England and Wales. I suspect we'll be seeing temperatures back to 30 degrees in the south uh, by Monday, 86 in Fahrenheit. Always cloud and patchy, showery rain in the far north and west. Through to the early part of uh, next week, this takes from Tuesday through to Wednesday, possibly dropping a weak trough down across the country from Tuesday to Wednesday you might turn things a little bit cooler. But uh, then after that, this particular one of the GFS wants to build this high pressure back in across the country through the second half of next week. To be honest, that looks a little bit like a heat wave there in the second half of next week. This is Friday the 27th of July, so it's running up towards day 10. But the high pressure is really strengthening there over the UK. Again, it's starting to move up towards um, Scandinavia. So by turning it through to day 10, which is Saturday the 28th of July, we are bringing in these hot easterly winds. That looks very similar to what happened in the summer of 1995. This summer has had a lot of similarities, really, to the uh, summer of 1995. The hottest phase of the hot and dry summer of 1995 was actually a three-week period, a uh, three- to four-week period, from late July through to the third week of August. That was the hottest phase 
uh, of the summer. The rest of the summer was quite hot, except for early June, which was a bit of a cool side. But um, the hottest phase of summer 1995 was kind of like the last days of July and then going through the first three weeks of August. In the final week of August, uh, the high pressure repositioned. It moved out to the northwest of the British Isles and it pulled down. Still quite a dry, but a co much cooler uh, northerly wind. So um, this looks quite similar, uh, continues to be quite similar to uh, summer 1995. That does hint at a bit of a heat wave there as we're going into the final days of July. Of course, it's just one GFS run, so it might not be reliable. But um, that's kind of like what the model is hinting at uh, this morning, I think. Temperature's probably going above 32 degrees there for the closing days of July, if that's right. Now, by September 29th, we're actually turning things a little bit thundery there, it's a bit of a thundery breakdown trying to take place, but it doesn't really uh, amount to too much, as we go into early August, again we re-establish a high pressure and bring back these hot easterly winds, so a lot of very warm to hot weather on offer with today's GFS run as we go into the end of July and the start of August, it does hint at a bit of a heat wave I think for the closing days of the month it's already been a very hot month as well, of course, so uh, it could well be that uh, this is going to be a record-breaking July. We'll have to wait and see uh, on that. And exceptionally dry as well, of course. This is the ECMWF, and that's looking... Uh, so we're going to build the high pressure back in across the country over the weekend. So Saturday could still be a little bit cloudy. There may be some showers around, especially so in the east. But by Sunday, we're re-establishing the uh, ridge from the Atlantic. So plenty of dry and warm weather there with the ECM through to the start of next week. Then uh, we go into this sort of very slack-type weather pattern through the middle of next week. So that could be generating some thunderstorms and possibly cooling things down a little bit. It's interesting how we're going through a phase uh, this summer of weekends being very warm to hot and uh, in the week it tends to be a little bit cooler. Uh, just one of those strange uh, coincidences that can occur, of course. But generally, the hottest days have been associated with the weekends uh, in this particular uh, summer. And we see evidence of that as we go into next week as well. Maybe a little bit cooler and a little bit more showery as we go into the middle of next week. But look what happens into the second half of next week. We start to strengthen the ridge across the country. So, again, this could well be hinting at a little bit of a heat wave starting to set up for the closing days of uh, July. That's day 10, Saturday 28th of July. Uh, that looks hot. It uh, will be, could well be taking temperatures at least to the low 30 Celsius, possibly even higher than that in the southeast. It's quite unstable. We have got low pressure out to us, so that might be generating uh, some thunderstorms. But I think this period, kind of like from the 25th of July onwards, uh, through to the final day of July, maybe in that period we might be looking at a heat wave getting going. We'll keep you posted. Uh, on that. Finally, just having a look at the charts from the Beijing Climate Centre for uh, the next 40 days. So these are the 500 millibar heights. They're broken down into 10 day periods. The first 10 day period will take us from the 16th through to the 25th of July. So the coming 10 days finds below average heights to our south, above average heights to the north, and come over here over towards Scandinavia as well. Uh, so we're bringing in these very warm to hot east southeasterly winds. Have got some instability to our South and southwest might generate some thunderstorms, but uh, plenty of dry weather really coming up for the next 10 days. And with winds in from the east or the southeast, it looks pretty hot. And this continues into the next 10 day period. This is the 26th of uh, July to the 4th of August, with above average heights again to the east, particularly centered over Scandinavia. Below average heights are out to the southwest. So again, we're maintaining a hot east to southeasterly uh, flow, uh, then into the start of August. That's the next 10 day period, days, 30, days 21 to 30, uh, takes us from the 5th to the 14th of August, and uh, the above average heights are still there to the north, northeast of the country. This is, this is a hot August, if this is right. Below average heights again, they're down to the southwest. Again, we're bringing in these east to southeasterly winds. So once more, we're looking at pretty, uh, pretty dry, very dry conditions and quite hot too. Always a chance maybe of a storm down in the southwest, but essentially the high pressure is blocking things out over Scandinavia. So heat wave conditions likely maintained into the middle of August. 
And then finally, days 31 to 40 does uh, show a little bit of a change. This is taking us from the 15th to the 24th of August. And the area of below average heights then starts to become centred over the top of the UK. The above average heights, the high pressure, looks like it's uh, slipping away into the eastern part of Europe. It will start to allow more influence from the jet stream from the Atlantic, so it will start to turn second half of August, it will start to turn cooler and fresher, and we will start to bring some rain in from off the Atlantic as well, probably via a thundery breakdown, but eventually we start to move some bands of rain in from the Atlantic. But... That is days 31 to 40, so it's right at the very, very uh, outer limits of what the model is doing. Um, and certainly for the next kind of like couple of weeks, it looks as though high pressure will be maintained to the northeast, keeping very warm, maybe at times hot weather going. And I think we possibly do have to focus on those final sort of five days or so of July for potentially producing. Uh, a heat wave. Now, the, it has been a hot summer anyway. It's been consistently way above average since uh, the end of May, or since earlier on in uh, May, been running an anomaly at around two degrees above average. We've gone above that for July. So it's already been a hot summer, but it may be, and this happened in 1995, and this summer has had a lot of similarities to the long, hot drought summer of 1995. Uh, it could be that the hottest part of this summer is actually still to go. So uh, we'll wait and see on that. In 76, if you want to know about that, the hottest part of summer 1976 was actually from like late June through to the middle of July. Those sort of three weeks were the hottest part of the summer of uh, 1976. And that really was an intense heat wave with uh, over two weeks of temperatures above 90 Fahrenheit across uh, many parts of the country. So we've been, we haven't got to that level of heat for this summer uh, yet. And uh, 1995 didn't either. 1995 was actually a drier summer than 1976, but it wasn't quite as hot as summer 1976 at its peak. So um, could be, I say, this summer has been. Um, it's kind of similar to 1995, I think. So uh, it could well be the hottest part of this summer is still to go. Uh, certainly a lot of dry weather still to come. Will be thunderstorms around in places and some showers, particularly in the northwest of the country. But overall, lots of dry weather and uh, plenty of warm to hot weather still to come, I think. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.